Martin Poshta made a mark on Prague in October when his Signal Festival of light installations and video mapping brought an estimated quarter of a million people onto the streets over one weekend. The Croatian-born film school graduate and former director of Fresh Film Fest lives on Polska Street in Vinoradi, right by Rigrovisadi Park. On a bench overlooking the park's longest slope, Martin Poshta explains why he's chosen this particular spot to begin our tour of his Prague. First of all, it's really close from where I live. And second of all, there's this wonderful view, which you don't get from any other part of town. You can see all the way across to the castle from here. All the way to the castle. And it's kind of a kitsch view. It's really, from my point of view, it's the view on the, of Prague, I guess. And then thirdly, I, I pass through here every day to, to my work, through uh, Rigori Sadi. So it's like really kind of a hub for me in a certain way. Where we're sitting now, there's a big slope. What kind of scene do you see here in the summer, during the summer evenings in particular? I used to run for a long time a film festival called Fresh Film Festival. It takes place in August every year. And what we did is we tur turned this slope into an open-air cinema. So we build a screen in, in the center of the park and there's this natural elevation, basically, what you have. So the viewers can just sit down, bring their blankets, bring the, grab a beer or, or wine or whatever, and enjoy, enjoy the cinema and indulge in the film we're playing. Also, of course, even when you haven't got the festival running, there can be maybe hundreds of people here. Yeah, it's, it's this kind of, uh, I don't know, it, nice or bizarre, that depending on the view you see it. There's uh, people sunbathing all over the Rigori Sunday, and there's the specific characters that you can spot every day. You, when, when there's sunshine, you can spot them walking around with their specific oddities, I guess. So... Are you talking about the old man in the very small swimming trunks? Exactly, that's, that's the guy I was thinking. <laughs> So, and then there's people running around playing frisbees and there's a playground that I walk my kids to. So it's, it's, and there is this oval which you can go jogging to and then... In the Sokol. In the Sokol and the swimming pool which is inside it that I haven't been to yet. But it's just across my street so I guess I will once. And what, what, what of course I forgot to mention there's this huge beer garden where you can, where you can grab a beer or the small, it's... Formerly, this building in the, in the center of, of park was uh, Likarna. It's like a dairy or something. Dairy, yeah. And now it's now it's a small pub with uh, with a nice rooftop view. Well, I wanted to ask you. I counted four places you can get a beer in Rigor Visadi: the big beer garden, the small place opposite Mlikarna, and the so cool the Sokol bar across from your place. Which do you think is the best spot for a beer in the park? I personally would prefer the the dairy, the Mlikana, because it's not as big as the as the huge uh, huge beer garden, and I think they have quite cold beer. One thing that strikes me about Rigor Visadi that's likable is that it seems so kind of random, the shape of it. It hasn't been laid out. No, it doesn't at all. And actually, I, I passed through Rigor Visadi so many times, but you still find certain points hidden, although it's not big, where you can get lost or where you have never, haven't never have ever been to yet. So it is random, it is randomly shaped, but it kind of evolves, you can say, evolves around the running place in Sokolovna. Maybe this will sound like a strange question in the wake of everything that we've just been saying, but is there any downside to Rigor Visadi or anything you don't like about the place? No, not really. I can't, I can't recall because yeah, it's nice, clean, reasonably quiet, considering how many people walk around clean. And that's that's from the father's point of view and, and safe. So it's all good. It's all good. I recommend it for a visit, definitely. The next stop in our jaunt around Martin Poshta's Prague is Rashinovo Nabraji Key. Perhaps better known as Naplavka, it hosts a farmer's market and in large part thanks to the bike shop and bar Bike Asil, has become one of the liveliest spots in the city in the summer months. So what is it about Naplavka that appeals to my guide? I guess you can see yourself, it's kind of the only Prague beach, I would say. And I, I think that everybody, you know, living in Prague kind of misses the, 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 misses the water or touch with the water, I guess, in a certain sense. And this is the only place which used to be not, not more than three years ago, four years ago, it used to be dead. And now you come here and you see, you know, thousands of or hundreds of people coming here every night, every day, walking around, kind of enjoying this part of newly discovered part of the city. And uh, 
this bike as little place which opened recently it, it was at the very beginning of all of it maybe the avoid gallery which used to be here but it was kind of a uh, careful and then with the, with bike as the concert starting happening here and and people you know you can see people every second passing on their bikes and this is actually my last stop of my biking trip which i used to go nearly every second day after work i used to hop on the bike and do a, this 40 kilometer round trip or circle which would nearly end here it would be like you know the beer after you hop off the bike get one beer and then drive off back to Vinohrady home also it seems to me a lot of Prague suffers from curfews a lot of places have to close early but here because there's a street between the quay and where people live it can be noisier yes it can definitely be noisier and I, and I know that there is like sometimes there is I wouldn't say parties, but there's things going on up until, you know, after midnight, long after midnight. There is also a river barrier, kind of virtual barrier between the other part of the town. So, so yeah, you can hang out really late. And there is, there is nights when it's packed like crazy. You mentioned cycling. Tell us about your route. Where do you go? Well, normally I start in Vinohrady and then I pass down here to this... Uh, we call it Danice, which means highway, because there's so many, I mean, on on, um, on Podoli side, there's so many people cycling and uh, roller skating. And uh, obviously the cyclists don't like roller skaters and the other vice versa. So I'm not really particularly fond of skaters, but <laughs> you have to kind of work your way around them. And uh, so uh, you, you go basically to the very end of that and then you, take a detour to Modrani and all of a sudden you're in Modranska Rokle which is this I wouldn't say paradise but it's something completely different and once you get out of that you go to Tochna which is a small airport and uh, all of a sudden you're just not in the city at all you just feel it's being somewhere in the countryside near villages and then back again I come back to Zbraslav back here to this highway and then back home but and it takes about two and a half hours to do this 40 kilometer round trip and it's so nice to get you know you basically just switch off your brain I put my headphones on and and then enjoy the enjoy whatever the sights and stuff so it's it's really nice Martin Poshta usually stops to grab a beer at Naplavka on the final leg of his long bike route but when he's going out for an evening on the sauce he regularly heads for Lokal on Deloha Street. Indeed, in its Vichep, or tap room, there's a shelf where he and his mates have their own half litre glasses. And it isn't hard to see why Lokal is his pub of choice in Prague. It's actually, let's say, a brand new pub, but it, it kind of takes over the appearance of the old traditional Czech pub, smoky, filled with smoke, with the grudgy bartenders, but it's not really like that now. And, and with so typical Czech dishes. And he probably has the best beer in Prague, or one of the best. It, it's Pilsner and it's, it's in tanks, which makes it, it's not saturated by gas, but it's propelled by compressed air. So it, it doesn't give you the specific taste that beer, some beer ha beers have. And we started going out with uh, my friends here and we meet basically every Monday here. And uh, that kind of earned us uh, a special place which is called Stammgast. It's like the regulars. The regulars, yeah. So actually we were sitting at the regular regular stable now and two years ago I think we started a Movember team, Movember su su support team. And this is Growing Moustaches for Charity in yes. the month of November. Yes, and it's it's how we earned our Mokal. It's like Movember local mugs which we have uh, engraved and personalized with our names on. Where else do you like to go in Prague for a beer or even for a coffee? My friend runs a small coffee place uh, just on Vinohrady. It's called uh, Mezizrenke. And she makes, she has this beautiful coffee machine and she's all in love with coffee. As now is, I, I think it's kind of quite trendy. Or I like to sit, run, sit down on, on the Jiriyas Podjebrat when, when there is sunshine and just, you know, sip on... Just on the square? Yeah, on the square. You just get a coffee. There is a bunch of coffee places you can go. Either the French one, the Italian one, the... the, the and they, they make quite a good coffee. Or you can just buy it from the farmer's market. Sit down, maybe get some snack. 
something to eat from Pecarna o Antonina, which is brand new and it's really nice. I can vouch for this. It's a fantastic bakery. Yeah. It's, it's it's brand new, open, and they make their own bread. And as opposed to you know to, to industrial made bread, it's something totally different. And it's not even ex expensive. It's just normal prices, and it has this touch to it. You know, uh, in in ninety nineties, everything was. In Czech Republic, it was expanding towards you know hyper hypermarkets, supermarkets, and everything was super and hyper. And I think finally now people are realizing that not everything that is super necessarily has to be super. So they're going back to the quote unquote roots, and then finding the the nice nice things about small small bake shops or small butchers or, or, or farmers markets. Which I mean, it's really odd for me coming originally from Croatia where farmers market was the market there was no other market and and now finally you you don't have to go to the supermarket to buy this pale oddly looking uh, tomato which is not really a tomato it's something grown in a, in a foil it's like a bag of water basically ba basically is tell us Martin what pubs do you like going to in Prague apart from local I really like this small. It's not. A, it's not a pub, really. It's it's a, it's a bar. And it's in the very center of Prague. It's called Chili Bar, and it's run by friends. And the bartenders are friends. And it's really tiny. You can fit, I don't know, maximum 50 people. And I was actually celebrating there, the birth of my twins, and I think we didn't fit it in, but there were over 100 people that came to this celebration. It was it was. A, Fun. Is that just off Melantrikova? Yes, it is just off Melantrikova. It's really hidden, and then tourists probably bump into it by coincidence. But it's really nice. It's usually very smoky inside, but you can come in at any time of the night, and it's normally open. And the, the bartenders are nice, and the prices are, I would say, not tourist.